Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sunny Side. I'm Sunny, and today we're going to talk about who we're going to talk about who is the most psychic water sign. And that's the action, guys. Hope everyone is having had a super amazing day. Welcome back. For those who don't know, oh, anyone wants a private reading or anything, just hit the PayPal link in the description box below. For those who don't know, I teach astrology and we play a psychic game on the channel at night. All right, let's get down to it. So number three, let's just jump into it. Number three, first up, the third most psychic water sign. Now, these feel like good. Now, I you don't have to be a water sign to be psychic, obviously, but let's just dive into it. So the third most psychic water sign. Now, these guys, just to let you know, they rule a part of the zodiac that I consider the psychic part of the zodiac. And it's that's the first thing, right? It sort of falls under a physicus a little bit, if you guys believe in that stuff. But I'm using that as an example, um, I'm using that term so that you guys know what part of the sky that uh, I'm referring to. And that is the part right between Scorpio and Sagittarius. And that tends to be a fairly psychic part of the zodiac. It's kind of how um, if you have something that aspects that part of the chart, you tend to be fairly intuitive. So that's how you get psychic Tauruses. Or, you know, because opposite that part. Anyways, or a psychic Gemini, because it's it's opposite that part of the chart. Anyways, that's number three, Scorpio. Oh, yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> For all the Scorpios in the house who are like, oh, I'm Scorpio, I'm super psychic. You know, whatever. Man. Uh, guys, you don't have the Scorpio, you don't have the psychic clout today to catch up to the other two. Scorpio is good. I'll tell you what else is going on. So they do rule the psychic part of the Zodiac. They are a water sign. But Scorpio is kind of like... Uh, they, instead of like wet water, <laughs> they're, they're kind of like dry water, right? The Scorpio rules is ruled by the Phoenix, and the Phoenix is kind of like, uh, like is the desert, <laughs> like, or the Scorpion is in the desert, and like if you look at it, like Pisces is a fish in the water, and the Cancer is a crab on the beach. Scorpio is kind of a, a Scorpion in the desert. <laughs> so there you go. So not the most intuitive representation to start with it's not very like oh anyway so that should be your first sign okay so that's the first thing next they're ruled by mars and pluto which are two very heavyweight planets very good mars helps scorpio be extremely perceptive uh very competitive and definitely aggressive and pluto helps scorpio with that scorpio massive obsession and their desire to blow everything up which isn't really the greatest thing in the world, right? Uh, it is sometimes, but not always. Anyways, Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Pluto, which is incredibly strong, very, very powerful. Scorpio is one of one of the most powerful zodiac signs. But as far as being psychic, it does help Pluto help Scorpio see behind the scenes um, and to delve delve <laughs> delve deeply. <laughs> so, right, anything that's the underworld is what we're talking about today. And Scorpio definitely rules some of that stuff. Um, unfortunately, they're not quite strong enough to get past uh, the real heavyweights of the Zodiac. What else? Scorpio is also represented by the South Node, and that's truly <laughs> a force of darkness and evil. For those who don't know, in Vedic astrology, uh, the Nodes actually represent the evil forces. Now, the nodes are going to come into play a little later on because we do use the moon's nodes. And obviously, uh, although in astrology, the moons and the nodes kind of like, they are the moon's nodes, right? And they do come into play under certain times and they'll come into play under another sign. But for right now, the south node, which is all about dissolving inwards, right? Do you know how Scorpios are always tearing things down? And I just described it as Pluto tearing everything down. Well, the south node really dissolves things inwards. And that's kind of a Scorpio kind of thing. And so, so that's the thing. So like if the moon is conjunct the south node, you're going to repress your emotions. You're going to have emotional problems. You're going to be withdrawn. If the sun is conjunct your south node, you're going to be very withdrawn. And you're not going to trust other people. You know, if Venus is conjunct your south node, you're going to repress your sexuality uh, and your how you relate to others somewhat. So that's the deal with the South Node. So, but it is a force of evil, which is pretty good, and that's the deal. 
So next, Scorpio rules the eighth house, which is all about death. So uh, then it, the Tarot Scorpio is ruled by the death card, which again doesn't really help our cause here today. Uh, and as always, as always, just to sum up with Scorpio, like Scorpio is an incredible power, power. They're a very powerful sign, very sexy, very successful, always good at what they want. You definitely want a Scorpio on your team. You definitely want Scorpios backing you up. But are they the most psychic zodiac sign? Not on this team. The water signs are tough. The next two, they'll knock Scorpio right out of the universe. Just to let you know, finally, to conclude with Scorpio, they are always three steps ahead. They're super intuitive, ridiculously, ridiculously perceptive. They're kind of like the Virgos of the water signs. Uh, and again, they're three steps ahead. But then <laughs> Scorpio tends to live in the past. So I don't know how good that helps them. <laughs> All right, next, number two. Now, number two is a tricky one, and I might take a little bit of heat for this. I used to think that these guys were the number one psychic sign of the Zodiac. I really did. And I had reasons for that. But, and today, as I'm going over this, I was like, yeah, you know, and we're bringing in this and we're bringing in that and this type of astrology and that type of astrology. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't pull the trigger on it. These guys rank second. Now, here we go. You guys ready? <clears throat> so, okay. First up, <laughs> number two, ruled by the moon. Ooh, I'm going to take some heat for that. Okay, ruled by the moon. Very strong, always changing. Okay, the moon, very, very, very strong. Like one of the most powerful um, signs in astrology is the moon. Okay, ruled by the moon, very strong, always changing. Can't see the entire thing. You can't, the moon is always hiding some part of it, right? You never see the entire moon. It's And it's always there. It's an, always a presence. Some people consider... Uh, the moon, the most powerful astrological body. Uh, there are religions. It's so powerful and so compelling, right? It's um, so compelling. There are religions dedicated to worshiping the moon. And for those who don't know, cancer women are super hot. And I think that, <laughs> that alone gets them ranked in the top two. But most psychic? Uh, yes and no. Let's get back at it here. So... So the moon is always changing. You can't see the eye, but it, it's always there. It's a continuing presence. It represents everything that you cannot see. It is your subconscious. The, loon, the moon alone should represent uh, your entire subconscious F essence. And um, that's like just the moon alone, all by itself. Um, in the tarot, the moon card represents... Uh, the Hebrew glyph is the back of your head, which it means the back of your head, which represents everything you don't see. It's the hidden. It's like what you don't see. In the, um, the moon is uh, also represented by the high priestess uh, in the Tarot. And the high priestess in the Tarot, again, is stuff you don't see. It's stuff that's hidden. It's looking inwards. It's, it's doing the moon. Hey, you do the moon. It's looking inward, finding out what's really going on. So that... All of that is psychic. All of that is your subconscious. All of that is your intuition. And all of it is ruled by cancer. So what are you going to do, man? Um, but that particular part of the astrological zodiac chart is not actually the um, what's hidden per se. Uh, the hidden part is actually represented by the next sign, the number one sign. Cancer in the zodiac represents home, family, and nurturing. So that's kind of how they slid the number two about. So everything you don't see, all of your subconscious, uh, what else is going on? All right, so Cancer is the only zodiac sign that can successfully navigate between the land and the water. Remember, Scorpio is like stuck in the desert. <laughs> He's going to be stuck in the desert. And Pisces and two fish going blue. <laughs> All right. But cancer's, Cancer is able to navigate between the consciousness and the subconscious, which is kind of what being psychic is all about. <laughs> Just letting it, you know, again, it's what psychic is all about. If you want to know more about all of this kind of stuff I'm talking about, then obviously just tune into one of our late night, one of my late night tarot live streams. 
uh, where we play the psychic game, where I play the psychic game uh, with my channel members here. And you guys can tune in and check it out if you want. It's a lot of fun. All right, so that's the deal. Also, getting back to certain things, Cancer also has the nodes, so to speak. Now, the nodes aren't really parked in Cancer. The south node kind of hangs out in Scorpio. The north node kind of uh, alludes to Aquarius. There you go, there you go. And so some people say the north node is Taurus because it's up, but whatever. Um, but the nodes, you know, but they are the moon's nodes. And the nodes are some of the most powerful. In addition, you know, they're some of the most powerful forces in astrology. They're responsible for signaling eclipses, you know, big life changes, death, massive success. And they can block the light. Um, at least nodes can block the light. You know, they're the only things in astrology which block out the light. It's real, they're extremely powerful. And they are the moon's nodes. And that's cancer. And that's the deal, guys. Like, I really, that's the deal. I was looking for, uh, at one time, I thought there was so much more uh, to back up cancer, but well, that's what we have. All right, and that brings us to number one. Who is the most psychic water sign? Aquarius. They're the water bearer. Duh! <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you make me want it. Oh, next, next. It's Pisces, obviously. Right? At first, glance Pisces doesn't really have much guys they're just two fish swimming in the mud but when you look deeper there's much more so Pisces hangs out in the water they are in the ethereal right Pisces is ruled by Neptune and Neptune is the planet of drugs alcohol illusions other things that make you want to get high space out and see the future or vomit and sweat your brains up and think you have a vision <laughs> Pisces rules all things that can give you a vision like racking up the credit card going ah! <laughs> or like whatever <laughs> it's like take smashing up the car and blaming it on something like Pisces could do all of these things okay <laughs> whatever Pisces is also ruled by Jupiter, which is luck and expansion. But let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Uh, it's also, and most importantly, Pisces rules, rules the 12th house of what's unseen and ethereal. So although Cancer is ruled by the moon, which is the planet of all things subconscious, uh, it's not really that part of the chart. Cancer is more rules nurturing with your subconscious, your subconscious desire to nurture everything. Whereas Pisces is more along the subconscious environment. And that's kind of how they rank uh, in first place. So whereas Scorpio kind of analyzes things very quickly, like they're a combination of a, a like imagine if Virgo was a water sign. It's that kind of intuition. And then uh, Cancer is more of a, um, a very empath kind of vibe. They really feel it. Like no sign, you know, they feel it. Pisces, uh, they kind of live it. They're in and around it. And being in and around it is how they're able to observe and recognize. It's how Pisces kind of pulls their psychic intuition out of the, the rabbit realm, whatever. All right, so that's the deal. Now, just one more before we go on. Let me clarify Pisces a little more. Between Pisces and Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is very spiritual sign, but it's not woo spiritual. And yes, I said Sagittarius. They're ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter is the planet of spirituality. But the difference is the Sagittarius is very straight shooting. It's very real. It's very fiery. It's very fun, very playful, very experiential, and very outside and big and broad and bold. Maybe there's a bonfire involved, maybe some body paint, very, I mean, there might be some Pisces coming along to bring, you know, bring in something. So that's Sagittarius, whereas Pisces is all of that. However, it's also uh, seen and viewed and experienced through this Neptune lens. And the Neptune lens blunts some of the distracting forces and some of the maybe uh, aberrations and illusions and Pisces can see through the facade to make it to the other side. Scorpio sees through the facade. Pisces can see through the facade. 
cancer usually creates a facade <laughs> it likes a, but that's the deal and that's the deal guys and that's my head to head with the top three uh who's the most psychic water sign cancer puts up a really really good fight um but pisces pisces is already there and that's the action guys i hope everyone has a super amazing day share the video be super cool and if you want a personal reading hit the paypal link in the description box below and we'll set it up on zoom from the sunnyside.net i'm sunny wishing everyone the best of a super beautiful day and i'll see you guys soon